One of the big problems that I have when people say that they have social anxiety and that they can't talk to strangers or new people or women that they're attracted to and so on, especially if they're cold approaching, is that it has just an overarching title to what is most likely a numerous amount of small individual problems. And it's all of these smaller issues that need to be individually worked on to be able to fix the overarching problem of cold approaching and talking to strangers. So I'm gonna go over in this video a much more analytical approach to working on your anxiety. And I'm gonna give you essentially a strategy that you can try and implement and then get you to take a much more third person perspective or outside look or view of the anxieties that you've got and then hopefully get you to work on them individually so we can fix this overarching problem. So again, I've got my, my blank canvas uh, that we're gonna work on and I'm gonna go over the five steps first and then I'm gonna give you just some examples so then you have an idea of how you can implement it yourself as well. So number one is I want you to then, first of all, oh blimey, that's, that's gonna be absolutely massive, hang on. Let's just uh, change the size of that. So the first, point that I want you to work on is I want you to specifically identify the anxieties that you've got. So number one, specifically identify the anxieties that you have. So number one, specifically identify the anxieties that you have. So again, the reason why I want you to be very specific with your problems is because it's too easy to just say, oh, I can't talk to strangers. What specifically have you identified that is the struggle with then talking to strangers? So you maybe have a problem with holding eye contact. Maybe you have a problem giving a compliment. Maybe you have a problem asking for directions. Maybe you even have a problem just getting out of the house and being in a public space. These are more specific issues that you might have that then we can individually work on. Because having a conversation with someone well, is gonna build up with a number of problems. If you can't hold eye contact with someone, then it's gonna be very difficult to have a conversation with someone. Um, if you can't ask questions or talk about topics and things, those are gonna be very specific issues that you're going to work on. And in fact, actually, maybe it might also be worth me saying as well that uh, this exercise is probably worth doing when you are out and about the house and when you're maybe practicing your cold approaching skills on your own with other people or maybe even with a dating coach. But first of all, specifically identify what's the problem. What are the issues that are coming up, especially to do with your anxiety? And then number two, what I want you to do is give it a rating. So out of 10, how strong or how bad is this anxiety, this problem that you have? And the reason why I want you to do this is that because I want you to be able to rate the intensity or how big of a problem it is. Because the bigger the problem, then it means it's uh, gonna have more of a priority for you to work on when you start identifying lots of problems. So if let's say um, you have, first of all, obviously identified that you can't talk to strangers, but specifically one of the problems that you are facing is that you can't stop someone. You have, as soon as you think about the anxiety or you, as soon as you think about the scenario of going to stop a stranger, the anxiety kicks in and you're like, I can't do it. And then you give it a rating and then you might say, it's a nine. So it's a big issue. And in fact, of course it would be a big, big issue because if you can't stop someone, then you can't have a conversation. And this is what then leads onto my third point, which is, 
if I open my notes again, which is that I want you to then question the anxiety. So you have to, whoops, question the anxiety. Again, I'm terrible at multitasking. Um, so the reason why I want you to question it is that you have to challenge it because sometimes our emotions can get the better of us and it's very easy to make a very emotional uh, decision about a situation rather than taking a more logical stance and questioning, uh, is it actually a problem? You know, what does it mean to have the problem for you? Is it a problem that only you have or is it a problem that everyone has? And what would it also be like if you didn't have that problem? If that anxiety or that issue wasn't there, what would the experience look like? So one of the things that I always like to adopt is having a very stoic mentality to everything and just challenging whatever limiting beliefs that you might hold on to. Now, just those examples that I've given here aren't going to necessarily be applicable to everyone, or you might have very different questions that you want to challenge on very different beliefs. But it's just really good to almost act as though you're playing devil's advocate or having this out of body experience. And what would you say to a friend of yours if they were facing that anxiety? What questions would you give them and what? how would you challenge them? Is that really a problem, Being a, not being able to talk to strangers? Maybe it's more scenario based. So like, for example, you would have a very different answer for, I can't cold approach a stranger on the street as opposed to, I can't ask the bar staff for a glass of wine or I can't go up to the counter or I'm scared to go up to the counter and pay for my food because I don't know what to say when I get to the till. Very, very different uh, issues that would play there. But again, playing devil's advocate and questioning that, you would say, well, you know, is this, uh, why is this a problem? Well, I, if I can't go up to the bar staff or if I can't go up to the till and um, uh, and give them my food, then I'm not going to get any food. I'm not going to be able to eat. Or if I can't go and talk to a woman on the street, then how am I going to be able to go on a date with them? Or how am I going to have the date in life that I've always wanted? Um, and then also questioning as well, like, you know, is it just you or is it everyone who has the problem? Well, in the case of on the street and talking to strangers, yeah, everyone has social anxiety. That's absolutely normal because if you're brought up in a culture that doesn't encourage uh, a lot of socializing, especially in a public place, then it's absolutely okay to be feeling anxiety in that circumstance. Whereas if you are going to a public space to buy food or buy drinks or socialize and you can't do it, then it's a you problem because if everyone else is able to socialize, then there's something that I need to specifically work on. So again, it's just really good to just challenge that because it's going to then help with the next thing uh, to answer the question for this, which number four is planning the solution. How are you going to work on the problem? How are you going to specifically work on the issue of your anxiety? Do you need to put yourself in a public space? Do you need to practice holding eye contact with people? How are you going to do it? How much time are you going to allocate to working on this particular problem? And with this one, it's also good or worth mentioning that it's a really good idea to just work on individual problems at a time, get good at that, get proficient with that, and then move on to the next. And this is where having a rating for that issue can come into play because you can then create a chronological order of what you do you need to prioritize first if it's going to help you to succeed with the other issues or anxieties that, that you have as well. So it's good then because you'll get guys, and, and to be fair, I've experienced this as well, where I know I need to do something, but I just keep putting it off. And then later on down the line, I will probably complain at myself saying, 
why, why didn't I do that workout? Or why didn't I do that brain training? And then by giving it a rating, say, right, you know what? I need to make that a priority. I will then plan to shift rather than trying to do a workout later in the day or in the evening or even better after my work, I will instead shift it to doing it first thing in the morning. That doing a workout and doing my brain training is more important than me doing my work because I know as soon as I've got those priority things out the way, doing my work and the other chores are going to be easy to get on and do. So it's good to be able to shift the priorities. And then when you're able to plan the solution, you can go, right, well, what do I need to do to make sure that I am doing these things and that I am working on them? How much time am I going to give myself? So if you're, let's say, struggling with eye contact, then perhaps you need to go, right, what can I do to get better with my eye contact? okay, I need to be out of the house more and I need to try and hold eye contact with people. So I will try and go for one second at a time first as I'm walking down the street. Then I will go for two seconds, then three seconds and four seconds and five seconds. And then from that, I will make sure I will then try and work on the next issue that I have, which is the stop. Because if you're able to hold four or five seconds with a stranger, eye contact with a stranger, then you should be able to have the confidence then to go and do the approach. Because if you've had that eye contact back, you get that thing that's called the indication of interest, or you get what's also known as a warm approach. That opportunity where the eye contact is there, and it's somewhat welcoming then from the stranger for them or for you to go and talk to them. So, Give yourself a window of time. Take uh, Think about what incremental steps can you do to work on that particular issue. And then the last thing or the last step, which would be to re review the rating. So five, review the rating. So you then think about what would your rating your original rating B uh, or what would it shift from and to if you then work on that problem so where I said before about I would be scared to go and do a stop that I would rate that a nine then if I were to strategically work on the issues with just doing the stop what do I think or what am I aiming to try and bring that anxiety down to now, this one is a great question because you're almost like trying to future plan a target of where you want your anxiety to be. And now, realistically, you're never going to get your anxiety down to one or zero. Even the most confident of coaches, they get anxiety. Anxiety is good and healthy to have. Without anxiety, you would be walking across a, uh, a street and if a car was coming and you, your fight or flight response wouldn't kick in, you'd end up getting hit, you'd go flying and most likely get killed. You know, touch wood, that never happens, but that you need, you need anxiety. Anxiety is what keeps you alive, okay? So it's important to just be aware that anxiety will never go away and that's okay. But thinking about the idea of, right, my anxiety for approaching women is at a nine doing the stop, but if I go out and practice over the next two weeks, I will try and do maybe four or five hours per week. I want to try and bring that anxiety down to a four. Brilliant. That is great. So you've given yourself essentially a goal to try and reach towards and you have an idea of where you're coming from, what you specifically need to work on. And you've also given yourself an idea of what exercises you can actively do to be able to work on those problems. And if you can do this on every anxiety that you have, you will definitely work towards overcoming a lot of these anxieties or issues, fixing the overarching problem. If you're bringing down your fear of stopping someone, if you're bringing down your fear of holding eye contact with someone, if you're bringing down the fear of 
giving a compliment or asking a question or asking for directions and so on, then overall, if let's say the issue, the big issue was rated uh, a nine or a 10, maybe that brings that down to a six, a five or a four, making you being able to go out and practice that little bit better. But more importantly, it shows you that if you can work on the individual problems, if you can learn to just focus on the things, desensitize yourself to the issues and take a much more strategic approach, then you will get your results or better results much faster. Sometimes just throwing yourself in the deep end and saying, okay, well, I need to go and uh, I, I struggle with social anxiety. All right, I need to go and talk to strangers. Sometimes that's too big of a leap. It's too much for people. And I don't want that rubber band effect that I've spoken about in my comfort zone video. I don't want that to take hold of you because then if it does work out where you, or if the situation plays out where actually uh, you got rejected, it was too harsh or maybe your social anxiety went through the roof, that pullback is going to make it even harder for you to go out and practice. So you are better to just focus on a particular thing, work on that, fix it, move on to the next thing. So I'll just write through uh, a couple of examples here. So let's say, first of all, one of the problems that you've got is eye contact. I struggle with eye contact. I can't hold eye contact with someone. It's a really big issue. So I'm giving it an eight. Um, how big of a problem is it? Well, if I can't, if I can't hold eye contact, I can't talk to people. It's just me who has it. Other people, they can talk to strangers, they can hold eye contact, it's not a problem. Uh, and also, if I can't hold eye contact, I can't be seductive, I can't, uh, I can't build attraction with the person that I like. What can I do about this? Uh, or how big, is it? Is it an issue not, not being able to hold eye contact? Not necessarily, because if I'm out in public, not everyone hold, holds eye contact with people. A lot of Londoners, it's a very normal thing not to hold eye contact with people on the underground or walking around in public. You only really look at someone if you're probably attracted to them. And even then you might sort of feel like, oh, that's still overstepping the line because it's very much a culture thing. Okay, planning the solution. What can I do to work on the solution? I will go out um for two weeks and uh build up eye contact i will start one second then two seconds three seconds and so on uh, i'll also put myself in scenarios where i have to hold eye contact so uh, i will purposefully speak to people. Maybe that's in a shop, maybe that's in a bar when I'm buying something, or maybe that's me going into a shop and asking questions and then just trying to practice holding eye contact for as long as I possibly can. So I'm building up to, with that. And I and and if I'm giving myself two weeks and I'm purposefully practicing talking to people, working on eye contact, if I'm walking down the street or going into shops and stuff, where would I like my eye contact uh, anxiety to be at? Well, if I can really do it and push it hard, I don't see why I can't get it down to a three. So I've given myself that I've, I've identified the problem, I've given myself a strategy to work on it, I've questioned the belief of how big of an issue is it, can it be worked on, which the answer is yes, and then I've now given myself a game plan to go out and then work on that. So that is then a really good uh, position to be in because now I've, I've given myself that time span of two weeks and if that means then 
if I can get to that level in two weeks, eye contact shouldn't be an issue for me anymore, which then gives me the mental capacity to be able to focus on the, uh, the next issues that I've got. Now, again, at least we are just bringing down the anxiety and the more desensitized you can get to the experiences, the less of a problem that they're going to be. And, and this is really the main takeaway that I want you to consider is that I just want you to be thinking about these anxious things less. The less you focus internally on your problems, then the better you'll do because you'll be focusing externally on the people that you're speaking to. And the more attention you can have externally, then the better your conversations will actually go because you're not thinking about any of your limiting beliefs. You're not thinking about the spotlight effect. You're not thinking about all of the worst case scenario problems that could potentially play out. Instead, you are just being very outcome dependent and you are focusing on the experiences that you are getting. So if you're a beginner, if you are uh, struggling with a lot of anxieties, why not give this exercise a go? Try and discover or work out what are the particular issues that you are struggling with and then take a much more analytical approach to it. Give them a rating, question that particular issue that you have, plan a solution. What things can you do to work on that particular problem? If it's your linguistics, if it's your body language, if it's the content that you are talking about with women, if you're struggling with going over to stop, if you're struggling giving a compliment, asking for directions, if you're struggling or you have anxiety going over and socializing or having to speak to someone in a public space or hell, even if you've got the anxiety of being out in public and you can't do that, then even that, the simple exercise or the simple planning would be to get yourself out of the house 10 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, and so on for like the next coming weeks. Build it up, build it incrementally. And in time, you will find then that when you review that rating, you'll find it to be much lower and it won't be as big of an issue. And then from that, you can then look to work on what like the next steps are for you. If you're finding like, especially if you are trying to do these on your own, that it's still an issue, then by all means, go to a dating coach. They will help you with these particular problems or that there are conversation coaches out there or confidence coaches out there. Or if you want, come to me as well. I offer life coaching and I also offer integral eye movement therapy that also specifically works on the anxieties of these problems. But what I like at least with this exercise is that I recommend people try and actively work on the problems first themselves. And if they can't do that, then seek help. Yes, absolutely. No coach is going to turn you down if you just identify you've got a problem. You know you can't work it out on your own. So you are better to go to a coach. Absolutely. That's great. But you also get guys who are very on the fence about going to a coach. And that's why I recommend to people try and do it on your own first. When you identify or recognize that you can't do it, then go to a coach. I will be here for you. Other coaches will be here for you. That is then the moment to take action. Because if you don't do anything, if you don't look to try and compartmentalize these problems and work on them specifically, then the overarching problem will always be there. And if you don't take action, it will never go. So have a look at my website, have a look at my coaching services and the therapy services that I offer. Uh, I also offer something called my dating desensitization therapy, which is essentially this, but you've got me walking with you and we're going to go over each of these problems. And I try and comp uh, compress that all in the space of a week and get as many of these particular problems uh, overcome as possible. So if you did decide to go to a dating coach or go out and practice cold approaching on your own, you can do it. And there shouldn't be so much of a problem. So take a look at my website. If you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd also love to hear your thoughts of this video in the comments below. And are there any particular 
anxieties you've got that you've been struggling with that you can now look to maybe be a bit more strategic with and hopefully overcome that in a short period of time or within a space of time. So I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts with that. But other than that, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Thank you again for watching. And until the next video, um, good luck with this. And I look forward to hearing your responses too.